How many thank yous in your thinking? Let's say that. How many thank yous in your thinking? In this whole reasoning in 2 Timothy 1, it goes up to point verse 7 where he says, how does he say it? For the Spirit God gave us. He's saying something and then he's saying, because, why? Why am I saying the following? Because the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. It's not a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Because the spirit must control you in what you think about. That you don't have in the thinking, it cannot be about a lot of fear, it cannot be a lot, about, a lot about stress and about this and the negativity. Because the spirit in you is not a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So my thinking, I can push in my thinking and I can remember in my thinking what I thought about and what I will be thinking about. And all of that can be in a line of, I'm stressed out because... In the situation, I must take responsibility and make a decision. But my thinking, there's not a thank you there, and there's not a guidance from God in the thinking. Hello? How will you get your thinking that is in line with God's thoughts, with his word? Put a thank you in there. Start your prayer with a thank you. When you come in a situation, it does not the word say, be thankful in everything. Because my brother, it's not, thank you Lord that I'm sick, or thank you that this, or thank you. But you can say thank you because in every situation, everything can work for the good for those who love him. Thank you at this moment that I have the capacity, the opportunity to worship you even though I feel I am out. I am down. I am finished. I am this or I am that. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spite of what I feel. Put a thank you in your thinking. If you can just remember that sentence, we can leave now. But we will not leave now. But put... The thank you in the thinking. How will you make sure the thank you is not, thank you, Lord. That guy got what he asked for, you know. You're happy. No, 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 that's rubbish. No, 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 not talking about that type of thing. The thank you in the thinking when you bring it in prayer. Bring it in prayer. But too many times in prayer, it's like information session as if God does not know your situation. No, you're sharing your heart. That's nonsense. You're throwing a tantrum. God didn't say, throw a tantrum in prayer. No, what do you do with a child throwing a tantrum? You bring certain discipline to come in line. Because in my prayer life, sharing my heart with God does not give me, uh, what's the word, uh, permission to have no respect for God in prayer. Amen? Respect for God in prayer is supposed to be there. Let it be so in Jesus' name. But in what I pray, my brother, my sister, in what I'm going through, thank God. Because His grace will be always there. He will always be there for you. His forgiveness is always there. His faith in you. He always is excited about your future. He always loves you. He will not relax His hold on you. The scripture says, He will not relax His hold on you. It's not like... He will not never leave you nor never forsake you, but he will not relax even his hold on you. The intensity of his love and his commitment and his being there for you will not become less. The intensity of his commitment and his love and his passion for you will not become less. You can always start with a thank you. Hello? May God help you that in our thinking, we cannot become so intimate in our thinking with the stress, with the, with the challenges, with the, with the opportunity, even positive, that our, in our thinking, we are not in, on the same page than God. We must be on the same page. Hello, he's thinking, see my spirit. We have the mind of Christ, the Bible says. 
Remember, always we say the mind of Christ, where in my spirit I have the mind of Christ, the word says. Once it is sin van Christus. Amplified says, and we do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God, where in my spirit I have it there. So if I can take this mind, be still and know that he is God, the one in my spirit, he is God. Be still and know. God, what is your thoughts about this facet, these things, this situation? What is your thoughts? It's not just about God. What is your will, left or right? God, as you're speaking to him and you have fellowship with him, what, what do you feel, God, about this situation? And sometimes God wants to just share with you what he He's thinking about certain stuff, if I can say like that. Having a conversation with God. Not just ATM, not just what I must do, what I mustn't do. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, boom, there you go. That relationship where he's knocking at the door, not first as a commander, but as the one that wants to have communion with you, fellowship with you. And in that fellowship, God, what is your thoughts about this? He's wanting to share his heart, his thoughts about some stuff, if I can say it like that, with you and with me. But for that, put a thank you in your thinking as you come in prayer before the Lord. Amen. We are and alles dankbar. Be thankful in everything. But then he says, I am reminded of your sincere faith. And then later, verse 6, for this reason, I remind you to do the following. I'm just saying, some spirit will make sure that you remember certain things. Let it be the Holy Spirit. The spirit, not of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. But not a spirit of condemnation that will remind you of all your mistakes. That spirit of shame that will remind you of all the stuff that you did wrong. Those words that hurt you, those words that disappointed you, those words that was real negative words. That you decide, I choose to be reminded by, by those words. Yes, there's, there's still hurt, there's still disappointment. But my healing is in the word of God. It's the word that will heal me. The word can heal me. So even in the hurt, in the disappointment, in the things that were said, the things that were done with that person or that situation, you want the healing? Focus. Be reminded about his words. Put a thank you in your prayer. Put a thank you in your vocabulary before the Lord. Hello? Are you with me? Is he leave? And from that place, be reminded about what God has done for you. Be reminded. Why can we so remember certain hurts, certain disappointments, certain things? How can we even describe it in such a way that it even the story gets bigger and bigger? <clears throat> gets more vocabulary and this description and emotion and <sighs> hallelujah may the lord help us in jesus name but my brother my sister i'm asking you uh, please please in this season as you put your thank you in your thinking through prayer when you think about that person oh lord i thank you for the fire of god on his life uh, god knows your heart you know be, be careful with that one. God knows your heart. But put that person before the Lord in prayer with a thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that person. Thank you, Lord, for that child. Thank you for my mother. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my husband, my brother, my whoever. Lord, I thank you that you send that guy to the ends of the earth, please. Please do it tomorrow. No, 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 no. You hear what I'm saying. But please, I believe we are in such a season when we, there will be such a lot of challenges that you will see. 
in the future in the nations also. Such a lot of challenges that we could face, my brother, my sister, and if you don't put the thank you in the right place, it will be feeling like going from crisis to crisis, crisis management the whole time. Crisis management, challenge, challenges, challenges. No, 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 no. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will suffer in it. Oh no, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Not some fake Colgate smile, but some true from the heart. Gladness. Gladness. God wants to give you gladness of heart. Gladness of heart. And in that there is also healing. Amen. Ach, let it be so in Jesus' name. So God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Sound mind has to do with the self-discipline, the discipline. He has given you a spirit that put a certain discipline in your actions, in your thinking, in your mindsets. There's a certain pattern. Discipline has to do a certain pattern. Has to do. There's a certain pattern for how you will live when you're this athlete, this soldier, this, in certain things that you will do, the more skillful you become, the more responsibility you have, the more accurate you must become. But for that accuracy, you must know a pattern. If there's not a pattern, how do you know you are accurate? Huh? Only if you can compare it with something. Uh, is that true? As you me? If there's no compass about where's north how do you know if you are accurate about going to the north so make sure that this is part of your life so that you can become accurate in god so that you can come become accurate in god god has given you a spirit that enables you to understand the patterns from heaven the spirit of love power and a sound mind, a discipline, the patterns from heaven, the patterns in God's mind, the patterns in his ways, his ways, his patterns. You have the spirit that will open up the patterns of the word for you so that you will know how to have accurate living. Because when that man, as a soldier, when he's accurate, he was accurate, boom, and the war is over. Are you with me? The athlete, we are talking about 2 Timothy 2 now. I'm ahead of myself now. The athlete, about accuracy the same. You're running your 800 meters, but you are free in the Lord. So you run, you're not under the law. So you don't go in this bane, what's this uh, lane, I said so, this lane. You're not going in this lane. You are free. So then you run to the tree. And then you run to the way they do the, not the slinger file, what's that, hammer throw. Hammer throw. Then, then you go there, then you go to the pavilion, and you come, and then you stop there where they throw the javelin, because you believe in your heart that's the end of the race of the 100, 800 meters. They will take you to a psychiatric hospital, or they will test you for alcohol. That's the only thing. One of the two. But, but for some reason, not anymore, but in the past, some Christians, in the past, not anymore, you don't find them anymore. They are more now accurate in Jesus' name. They had this type of 800 meters that we run. There are certain patterns, there are certain rules. Are you with me? So in 2 Timothy, there's a lot of patterns, there's a lot of things that he said, in your thinking. In your thinking, in how you put certain things in your life. The spirit of Self-discipline, spirit of self-discipline, love, power, and a sound mind. Sound mind with self-discipline, the other translations, has to do, even in that sense, Yeraki Malni, you don't get crazy up here because you understand certain patterns. You don't always understand the reason for certain things. The certain reason for certain patterns that God has given us on earth. But you can understand the pattern. Because you have the spirit that will open it up for you. So don't be confused. Even when he talks to Timothy about, guys, 
um, especially to Timothy, a lot of uh, arguing and, and arguing about this, and what is now right about this, and what is right about that, and a lot of, lot of wara waraing in the conversations. This man is saying, there's a certain thinking, there's a certain way of doing, become accurate in the word, and you can do this because the spirit that has been given to you is not to condemn you. It's not to bring fear. It's not to see how far you just fall short in everything. But it's because God has a love for you. Love, for everyone he loves, he disciplines. Power, you must find strength from the word. When you think in your thoughts about the negative stuff, the power is gone. Hello. But when you think, when you hear the word, it's supposed to energize you. It's supposed to strengthen you. The word must strengthen you. Hello? In your thinking patterns, you can, you can remind yourself. You can choose to remind yourself about certain things so that you are drained before you start to work. You think about the relationship, you're already tired. Hello? God can help us in Jesus' name. We trust him for that. Is, is that so? So when the two spies came, not the twelve, with a ten that said, looked at the facts of the giants, and two said, let's go for the truth of God's promises. Now the second time, the two spies came, and they went to Jericho, and they heard that the people are in fear. They have no strength. Why? Because they didn't... They are finished fighting. No. No fight yet. But in, what, in their thinking, they heard about what God has done to the Egyptians in Egypt and at the Red Sea. And at the Red sea. So they heard about that and their strength is gone. Are you with me? When last did it happen that the enemy had no strength to come against you? Because the enemy can hear that you know what God is doing in your life. The enemy can see that you are bragging about God and what God is doing. That you are thinking and thanking God in your thinking about what God is doing and what he has done. And as long as you do that, he does not have the power to come against you. But you stay... You stay with the negativity or the depression or the this or the that and all the other rubbish. You will have no power. And he will have the power to come over you. You have received a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. The spirit that will open up the word, that the word will energize you, energize you energize you but you must remind yourself about the word you must remind others and others must be allowed to remind you if god says remind them remind them then it means you must be open to be reminded by them about the word of god well oh, what the enemy can do when you've heard a, a teaching a second time oh or oh, scripture you've heard the scripture already you're already going away you know, uh, let's say I start to quote this verse that you have heard 3,000 times. You, and you know what it says. And from an intellectual point, you know what it says, so you carry on for the, what, okay, what's coming next. In instead of commune with that word. Interact with that verse that you've heard, we're going to hear now for the thousandth time. Interact with that scripture that you know by heart. Interact with the scripture that you feel bored if you must hear the scripture again in your emotions because you know the scripture. But the word is active and alive. And if you can take the word, hello, and let it deal with you but you have interaction with it then in that scripture that you appreciate, you say thank you to God for that scripture. Hello? And it will energize you. It will energize you.
and in your thinking, in how you remind yourself and how you remind others and how you allow others to remind you about the word. And you have communion with the word. Hello? Then we can just go to the next level. Because we stir one another in the spirit. And we are building one another up in the spirit. That we walk out with more stature. But then I must hear it from the right spirit. In the right way. Because if I sit with the spirit of condemnation. Or spirit of religion. Or a spirit of lawlessness. Or a spirit for, of whatever you want to call it. From that place, it's not possible. You just feel condemned. You feel more empty. You feel more frustrated after a prayer session or a, or a time with the word. No. You have received. You can do this. You can get your thoughts in line. You can have a, a life of thankfulness. Why? Because you have received the spirit. Not a spirit of fear. Not a spirit of fear that makes you unsure. Fear that brings an Unsure, a spirit of fear that will make you hide, even in Eden, will make you hide away, hide away. No. The spirit of love is this passion of God, power, and a sound mind. You know, I once did uh, this prophetic uh, counseling ministry, five questions with someone. They, he, was, he said, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God. And I just felt I must do it with him. And I said, okay, let's make as if God exists. Let's just play a game. Let's make as if God exists. Now you ask five questions. And I hear from God five answers. And I'm going to write down what I believe. And he was very... So one of his questions was, uh, what is bigger than God? What is the... the I can't remember how I put it, but something like, what is bigger? What is the concept that is bigger than the God concept? Something like that. And I was like, to look at the answer. <laughs> and I look at the answers and said, uh, the love of God. And I was so amazed with the fact of God submits to his own passion. What is more than God is, God is submitting to his own passion. For God so loved the world, he cannot help himself. So God himself submits to his love. Therefore, I will give my son to die on the cross. But I cannot take this love in me. I, I, I must submit to my, this love. Hello? God is love, Yes. He submit to himself, but he submit to this love. He's so loved that he, he will not kill them. He will not destroy them. He will send his son to die for them in their place. So that they can have eternal life. So that this love in God that he has for this, he, these humans. That he can fulfill that dream world and make it a reality. Amen. Ah, are you with me? Spirit of love, power, and sound mind. Self discipline patterns that is from above. Amen. Let's quickly go. Chapter 2, verse 3 to 6. Chapter 2, verse 3. It's somewhere here. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier. Everybody say, a good soldier. Good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Discipline. There's a certain discipline. Similarly, everyone, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victory, victor's crown, except by competing according to the rules. We talked about that. The hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am, I am saying. That reflect is think again about it. Think again and think again. So let's think again and let's think again. That's the, the context of this, of this letter. So the farmer, my brother, my sister, there's certain patterns. No, I, I'm free. I'm sowing the seeds, you know. But half of that is where the tractor is going to drive. Half of them is up. There's a certain way that you will sow the seed. There's a certain time. There's a certain ground. There's this. Hello? Are you with me? 
You must deal with certain rubbish that's in the ground. So you put in a certain effort if you want a certain result. But you know the amazing thing of all of this. You're a soldier, you're an athlete, you're a hard-working farmer. But as a soldier, first of all, you're an overcomer. Let's say I'm an overcomer. As an athlete, you're a winner. Let's say winner. And in your business, you are successful. Say, I'm successful. Now, through the blood of Christ, in Christ Jesus, that's where, where you start. As a soldier, you already start as the overcomer. Because in Christ, you are even more than an overcomer. Through Christ. Amen? You start in the battle tomorrow as the overcomer. You start in the race as the winner. You start in your business, in that what you do, as a successful man, as a successful woman. That's where you start in the name of Jesus through the blood of Christ. Is it not 1 John 4.4? 4? You have overcome. For greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Not you have overcome because you did everything right, and now I can say you have overcome. No. You have overcome because of the presence of the overcomer in you. I no longer live. This loser does not live. This loser is crucified with the one that took the blame for the loser. So that in the overcomer, my life is in the overcomer. The overcomer in me and me in the overcomer. Me in the winner, the winner in me. Jesus Christ. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live through him. Through him, through him, and through him alone. So the overcomer of heaven and earth in me, and me in him. My brother, my sister, through the blood of Christ, respect who he is. But if I focus in my thoughts with my issues and my twisted way of doing, how will I get to that place for tomorrow's more tomorrow's challenges that you face as a soldier in the battle for tomorrow's challenges for tomorrow's race that you're supposed to run eyes focused on Jesus Christ the finisher author finisher of your faith Hebrews 12 hey eh? two as a runner how as a farmer will you see the 30 60 100 fold harvest on what you do in that what God has called you to do in your work in your work. How will you do that? Get yourself in the word. Amen. As a child of God. Get yourself in the word. With a thankful heart. Start to thank God. And don't try to. In, in the midst of your challenges. just it's, But in your head. It's just the challenges. Just the challenges. While you're thinking about the word. Start to thank God. Get into the word. Think again. And think again. And remind yourself. And let others remind you about the word. Hello? Let it be so in Jesus' name. And you will be living. Practically you will see. You live as the overcomer. You live as the winner in every race. You live as a successful man every day in the work that God has called you to do. Faithful you will be. So it will be in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The same. Do your best to present yourself to God as a approved, as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, but who correctly handles the word of truth. The word of truth. Accuracy. Accuracy. Accuracy with the word. As a what? As a worker. Because God has called you to work. There is work that needs to be done. Otherwise, when you gave your life to Christ, you had to go to heaven immediately. And glory, glory on the glory, and there you are, and you're enjoying life in heaven. But why are you here? Because you are called with a purpose. You are set aside, holy, set aside for a certain purpose. So when the rubbish in your head and in your mind, uh, not anymore in the past, I'm just for interesting sake, about in the thinking with somebody, with someone, with an issue key, with a, with a fight, with a, 
negativity. What are you going to do with those thoughts? Because you're standing against God and what he asked you to do. So first of all, you start to thank God for that person. Thank God about that situation. In prayer. You get God's excitement over that person. And over the fact that in your circumstance, everything will work for the good for those who love him. Hello? And then stand, you believe the word that says you are more than a conqueror. You believe the word, the word that says you are with the winner there in your race. Hello? You believe the word that you are in Christ successful. You are productive in Christ. Hello? And your faith overcome the world. 1 John 5. Because you react by faith on the word and you put the word in here for more faith. You believe this word and then you go and, and you take more of the word and the more word, the more faith. The more faith, the more word. And it, it, it grows. Amen. And when you walk by faith, life can become simpler. Because with the faith of a child, you can enter the kingdom. But when I'm struggling with my faith, life can be so complex. And all the situations complex. And all the relationships so complex. And the complexity of everything. Because I cannot just take as a child the simple word of truth and go with it. God must help me. God must help you. And let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. So all say. Okay, I'm going to leave that to you. Verse 21 of 2 Timothy 2. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter... That means all the rubbish. No, everything that's mentioned just before. Will be instruments for special purpose, made holy, useful. Everybody say useful. To the master and prepared to do. Prepared to do any good work. Talking about the good works that God has prepared for us to do. Prepared to do. We see that even in uh, chapter 3. Now, oh, let's go there later. Okay. All I'm saying, I'm saying here, deal, let the word deal with you and you with the word. Interaction, so that you can fulfill your calling for the good works that God has prepared for you to do. Tomorrow, you don't just gonna wara wara do. What you do, first of all, you say thank you to God. Even you, you are irritated with your job or your studies or what you do. You start to thank God. And whatever you do, you do it as if unto the Lord. And you trust God that he will equip you. You get into the word to make sure, because God promised for every work that he will, he will equip you thoroughly. Not equip your fear. Not equip so that you don't have fear anymore. Fear can be present, but you can have the faith in the midst of your fear to overcome. You can walk by faith, and walk by faith many times happens... In the presence of the emotion of fear. In the emotions of fear. Your spirit can rise up with faith. And from your spirit you walk by faith. With the word in truth and spirit. In truth and spirit. Your worship lifestyle in truth and spirit. You go forward as you focus on him in your worship. Hello? In the midst of fear. Struggles. Stress. Anxiety, negativity, that's all around you, but you are not the product of those rubbish. And you will not think about those things the whole time. You will not remind yourself what they are saying the whole time. But you will remind yourself about what God is saying. And if you don't get it right, you tell people, preach to me more. Remind me more about what God has said. If I'm getting angry, just do it in spite of that. You know? If I don't like you because you... Tune me. It's okay. Just keep on doing that. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture. All, everybody say all scripture. Is God breathed and is useful. Thank you. Everything is useful. For teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Oh, man. And sometimes when you hear oh, another teaching or another rebuking or correcting or another training sometimes your flesh feels oh come on man we are enough we are enough we are enough but he says training in righteousness in 
righteousness. That means when your life is in the right place, the word is useful. When you write, your life is not in the right place, if you are in performance just to try and win God's favor, or you are in, in, in this rubbish or in that uh, depression or in that, whatever you think you are in. You're not in there, you are in Christ. Your emotions could be in that depression, or you're this or you're that. But you are in Christ. And from that place that you believe and you know that you are in Christ... Your training in righteousness, the right place before God. In that right place before God, as a child before the Father. The Father can give you discipline. Then when you get into the Word, if it's now a rebuking, if it's now an encouragement, if it's a correcting, the fact that it's the Word builds you. Because you love the Word. You love the Word. And hearing the Word even it's correcting me, it's okay, but I, I love. Ooh, there's maybe when you were small, you had a hero, and uh, you know that person, if he would say, jump, you will jump. You will not argue. If that hero would tell you, no, you must do this. No, man, go and brush your teeth. Let's say he would do that. Huh. Then, will you argue? No, no. If that lighty, that's the hero, he will run, and he will tell all the rest also to brush their teeth. You know, because his hero said it. It's all about the one who's speaking. So if you position your, yourself accurately towards the one that you say you love, and you take the word in the context of the one whom you love, then if it's rebuking, if it's again a teaching, it's a correcting again, then it's okay. Because I'm not a focus. He's the focus. I love to have the time with him. Let's, let's go for that lifestyle, my brother, my sister. Is that okay? Is that okay? Let's do that, man. Let's do that. Ah, correcting, God breath, useful. Teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. So that what? For what? For what? So that the servant of God, the one, oh, you serve. Because you will either serve God or yourself or your flesh or somebody. But you will serve somebody. So that you may be thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped to sit back and to enjoy life. Yes, but thoroughly equipped for every good work. If you don't do the work that God has called you to do, you will stay confused for the rest of your life. You will not be satisfied. But if you can come into the work, no, but I don't know exactly. Guys, God called me to Malaysia. God called me to... No, tomorrow, tomorrow God has called you to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, the letter of Christ, the ambassador of Christ. Hello, the fragrance of Christ. Tomorrow you will speak to somebody. Tomorrow you will pray for somebody. Tomorrow you will encourage someone. Tomorrow you will say thank you for the opportunity in the work that you have. Tomorrow, in that simple way, those simple ways, tomorrow you will bring your five bread and two lo loaves, five loaves of bread and two fish, yeah, to the Lord. Hello? Thoroughly equipped for every good work. My brother, my sister, let it be so in Jesus' name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I want to leave you with that. I just want to challenge you to say, please, through the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit open up this word for you. This word for you. And make, make, Effort. Put in effort so that you can become accurate with the word of God. It's a sword. It's, it's very sharp. You can really hurt yourself. You can really hurt others. You know the, the, the flies knife. What does he flies miss? The stake. Yeah, that thing. The stake knife, whatever. It's very sharp. Uh, are you with me? Very nice. But you must handle it with care. You must handle it with care. You must handle it with respect, if I can say like that. It is not the plastic knife of daughter two years old. She can play with that knife, yeah. But the Word of God is very, very, very sharp. And it can hurt even yourself.
You can even hate yourself. You, you need to have respect for the word, and you need to become accurate with the word. You need to think and think again. And so when we get hurt through the word and what we trusted for, what we prayed for, what, then we stand back. No, by God's grace, by God's grace, take it step by step with someone, but get into the word. And let, when last did you pray, and, or let somebody pray for you, pray that I will have such a passion for the word. When last did somebody pray for you that you will have such a love for the word of God? When last did somebody pray for you that that will be so? Because from that, everything comes. Everything will be shaken. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. It will not pass away. It will be fulfilled. There's certain things in your life. It will pass away. It can destroy you. You can be destroyed with it. But there's certain things that must be fulfilled according to God's promises, according to the dream from your father. And that is through the word. And it's only through the word that the dream from the father can be fulfilled in your life as you embrace the word as the agent for the dream of the father to be fulfilled through you. God, as we come before you, we love you, Lord. And even now in communion, Lord, we want to declare that we are so grateful, so thankful that we don't have to stand ashamed, but that in our repentance, in, in that there's forgiveness, Lord, that we can have boldness to the throne of grace through the blood of Christ. God, I pray for every man and woman whose life is right with you. If they need to partake in communion now with us, that they will use this opportunity, each one of us, Lord just to come back to you and to commune. God, we say we are sorry for our thinking, for not having the thank you in our thinking, Lord, through prayer about people and situations. Forgive us for that, my Father. Guide us now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.